the future is awesome. Hey, Futurists. Welcome back to P2P on Awesome Future TV. We have a great guest for you today. Joining us from Seattle, Washington is CEO of BioViva, Liz Parrish. Hi, Liz. Hi, how are you? It's nice Hi. to be here. Oh, I'm doing well. So welcome, welcome. We are excited to have you here today. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to talk about some of the things we're doing because I think your viewers would be interested. Yes. So you just recently participated in a Reddit AMA. And how was that? Uh, it was actually, I didn't know what to expect. And um, it was interesting because some of the questions ranged from, of course, questions that I can't answer because I'm not a medical doctor, to uh, to what is my favorite pizza topping, and then everything in between. And um, I, I knew that I'd be in the hot seat. They'd be answering some very, um, or asking some very important questions, and they certainly did. Um, it was great. Um, what was frustrating is, obviously, I didn't have time to answer everyone's questions. Questions, and uh, that left me, you know, kind of upset and overwhelmed. Was there any questions that you felt you wanted to be asked that wasn't? Um, I think that I think that when people came to the AMA because of the press release, they didn't assume that they would be talking to patient zero. And so I think that there were a lot of questions that were uh, missed uh, in, in that case uh, because they had come and formulated questions that were more about uh, why we would do that, what exactly, what, what genes we were using, what exactly the protocol was and things like that. So I think that they were not ready uh, because they didn't have all of the information, but I think that they did ask a lot of intelligent questions. I just assumed that once I had stated that I was the patient, there would be a lot more um, internal discussion about uh, my, my health in general. Right. And what does your company do exactly? Well, we're a gene therapy company, and we're right, trying to really push uh, getting into human model uh, gene therapies now to save lives. So we treat aging as a disease. It's the number one killer in industrialized countries biological aging underlies all the diseases that we get. So we don't really come out and say we're so much life extensionists, although we are. Um, we come out and we say that we're disease, we are trying to mitigate disease. So that is our um, the way that we work. And so we're trying to mitigate the diseases of old age. And we believe the only way to do that is to look at cellular aging, biological aging, and stop it and reverse it. Uh, then you don't get the diseases that we see crop up over 65, which are the least, least cause of mortality in industrialized countries. Wow. And you mentioned before that you were patient zero. What does patient zero mean? That means that I was the first person to take uh, gene therapies to reverse biological aging, uh, two gene therapies in this case. Um, and we are um, going to be studying my body. We have other groups who will be studying my body to see if there were, in fact, any benefits. Now, for you to become patient zero, that means that you have so much confidence in what you're doing and, and what your company is, has achieved. So what, what is the, the markers that you've seen or what, what progress have you seen that has given you the confidence to say, okay, now we're ready. Now it's time, I want to be patient zero, and I'm ready to do this for myself. Well, for telomerase induction, um, there are many animal studies uh, that pointed to evidence that this would be, in fact, the way to go. There are tens of thousands of papers written about that uh, therapy itself and what telomerase induction is and what it does. So we are the first persons to put it in humans, uh, but we feel like the research was there. Uh, the other um, gene therapy used was a myostatin inhibitor, and actually it's in phase three clinical trials with children with muscular dystrophy and has been through every animal model. So for that one, I felt like I could have taken that one with my eyes um, closed and, and not even considered. The other one, we don't know what will happen, but I think that now is the time to find out what will happen. And, um, you know, I know what the outlook of my life looks like without these uh, therapeutics, and I know what everyone else's life looks like without these therapeutics. And I really felt like it was a, a risk worth taking, and I felt like it was really important that I took the risk uh, because, you know, we had a lot of people come forward and say that they would do it, 
uh, it just didn't seem like the right thing to do. And I do want to expedite uh, the research to uh, compassionate care uh, persons, people who are dying now. But for the first test, um, I felt like I should take uh, all of the, uh, the weight off of the, the world for that one and, and see how it goes. So fascinating. I am so excited for you. I can't wait to see how everything goes. And if you don't mind me asking, how old are you or how young are you? <laughs> I'm 44 and I'll be 45 in January. Uh, so I am a good age for this uh, for two reasons. Some people thought that these therapies shouldn't be tried in anyone like over 70. Uh, but we really need to get um, as healthy effect as we can. And what I mean by that is we need to use a, a healthier body that has definitely uh, suffered from aging, but not so much that we can't get the, the uh, most exact results on what will happen. So somebody over 70 might have a, a myriad of underlying diseases that these, this therapy may or may not help. And so it's essentially using a healthier body, even though I would, I would say that I have the disease of aging, um, and to try to get the best results out of, a, of a, the best functioning body possible. Tell me about what we could expect. What will the future look like? I mean, is this a science fiction far off thing or could this be within the next couple of years? Could we actually start slowly reversing aging and the, and the effects of it within the next maybe a few decades or even shorter? Well, that's what definitely what we're working on. The thing is, we can't cure Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer if we don't do this. So it's based in very ba uh, very sound science. Uh, this is uh, where we're headed. This is these are our targets. I think that we'll get there sooner or later with the public support. Uh, I think that most companies are working on some variation of this at this point. Uh, they're all looking at biological aging as as the underlying uh, mechanism of these diseases. We hope uh, that it comes sooner than later, and we think that the future will look much like um, it does now with immunizations, except for there'll be gene-boosting therapies. And so what we'll do now is we'll work into the disease model. We'll use these same treatments separately that I took. We'll use one for sarcopenia. We'll use the other for Alzheimer's and other late-stage diseases. We'll gather the information and then we'll start using them younger and younger as, as it seems fit. And as we learn whether or not this affects the germline, your children, the offspring of the people who take the therapies, then it might even be used younger uh, than we predict. Right now we are predicting something around you know, uh, 40s to 50s um, in the future once we've reversed everyone's biological aging. And um, then you'll get your gene boosting therapies. Maybe you'll opt out of, of having children past those ages or, or whatever is necessary to make it as um, supported by the community as possible. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, it really sounds like something out of a movie and I really hope it happens. Why do you think so many people don't know about anti-aging and longevity research today? Well, I think that it's a it's a it's a it's a multi pronged um, issue. For one thing, uh, anti aging has definitely been you know the first people to come to it didn't have much to sell. Let's just say right, and um, really the best things that you can do for the average person right now is exercise, good nutrition. You know, don't overeat and exercise your body. We know that phenotypically, you know, genetically or epigenetically, you change many genes by doing that. And that's going to put you in your best, youngest state. Don't smoke cigarettes, number one. Um, outside of that, there hasn't really been an, an enough to offer. So we've done things like nips and tucks and injecting faces, you know, with plastics and, and various things. And I understand why people do it, especially being a someone getting older. You become more and more invisible, you know, as you get older. Uh, so, but there was nothing really to offer that was a fix. And so as soon as human growth hormone came along, you know, you saw how many people jumped on that bandwagon. You know, there's evidence that that is not the way to go, but it's a short term fix. But now people are going for quality instead of quantity. We want to think them to think about both of those things. We want them to think about quantity and quality, uh, together. We want people to, uh, it, reconsider, you know, leaving their legacy to universities and such like that and actually consider living their legacy. You know, definitely you should put your money to research and medicine, but live your legacy, live to see uh, the, the fruits of your labor rather than thinking that you need to die and leave everything behind um, 
to uh, an institute that you love to get the benefits from. So it's kind of like changing a mindset and it's getting the real science out there, you know, what's actually happening at these levels uh, of, you know, I mean, we've reversed aging in animals. We, we've done that, you know, so why aren't we doing that in humans? I think that then you have to go from that to, you know, what are the, the markets, you know, our markets through our medical doctors or pharmaceuticals, you know, pharmaceuticals are still an experiment. Uh, the FDA would say that they're not experimental once they're, once they're passed through the FDA, but they're still, still an experiment and people are dying taking them. As a matter of fact, you're guaranteed to die of the very disease that you're taking your drugs for. So, you know, a lot of people tr make a deter determination of whether the side effects are worth, um, you know, the benefits of their drugs often. And uh, I'm not saying to not take your medicine. You definitely should do what's prescribed by your doctor. But a lot of these doctors are unaware of new technologies. Um, so I think that the big companies need to make a paradigm shift. And we're seeing that. We're seeing more and more pharmaceutical companies get interested in uh, the aspects of slowing down or reversing biological aging. And, you know, they really control the media. I mean, we have to admit it, you know, when we came out with um, our release of this information, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't uh, invited to all the big places, right, to speak about it. And even, even though it's like one of the biggest things that we could do as, as people in the world is cure disease. But, you know, you have to be really well connected. And um, I think that eventually we'll make those connections and we'll see, people will see that, you know, we're, we're a good group and we're an honest group and we're really doing the work. Um, but, you know, how do you earn that credibility, you know, when you're when you're not one of these uh, larger companies? So what do you feel that are these big hurdles, like you said before, with the media and things like that? What do you think are maybe perhaps the top two hurdles that we have to overcome in order to have this available to the masses, that everyone will be able to afford uh, this type of gene therapy and, and be able to evolve with it in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the whole thing is how do you get it to the people? You get it to the people in, in two ways. Uh, one of them is you you start a grassroots roots movement. You educate the public. The public needs to learn about these therapies. They need to learn that th this is technology that is uh, viable, that it works, and they have to demand it. Uh, the second thing is funding, and that's something that usually the, the general public doesn't have the, the, the monetary um, tenacity to actually take care of. And so, um, you know, we need uh, people to come forward and fund and we need people to educate both those things. And I know it's, it's comparing, I read online that it was comparing gene therapy, the cost of it, um, to computers back in the 1960s, saying that gene therapy today could be millions of dollars, whereas in the future, as technology will continue advancing and, and changing, uh, that we will be able to afford gene therapies at the cost of something like a computer today, that it, we will eventually get there to the part where everyone will be able to afford it. So yeah. what is it What is it today? What's in the future, do you think? I think that that's what a lot of people have concern about. A lot of people are concerned that only the rich will get it and the rest of the world will not get it. And I think that that's a sort of dystopia that's been sold to us through movies. Um, you know, I mean, the media, this, um, you know, Hollywood and things like that has not really done a good job for AI or, or gene therapy or, or any of these sort of, you know, uh, techniques and therapeutics that could make the world a better place. Um, what we need uh, now is obviously people with that big money to come forward, but certainly uh, they will be taking a bigger risk uh, coming forward now than the general population will later. So the U.S. government could save over a trillion dollars a year if its population wasn't dying of aging diseases. And as a matter of fact, they just saved that on, on mitigating these diseases, not on the production that the workforce could then add uh, to the coffers uh, of the U.S. government if that's the way you want to see it. So there's a lot of advantage, and I really do not think uh, that rich people would then stop it right there and say, well, it's just for me and all these other people die. There's, there's a myriad of reasons that a strong, healthy, youthful workforce is something that they would want. Um, also, our company would ensure that that doesn't happen. You know, that's why we're here, and uh, we're here to ensure that the world does get this and that we are transparent. Uh, we're a small company. We're we're not a big company run by you know numbers and bureaucracy and paperwork that you can't get through. 
I think that that's what's fantastic about this is, you know, we can definitely gain a place for the general population because we're actually people built from that population. You know, we're not the elitists. And so I think that between the things, these two things, we can work together to ensure that, that people do get these therapeutics. And insurance companies, you know, they're going to love this, you know. I, I mean, it's mandated you have to have insurance. That's probably not going to go away. So what does an insurance company want to do? They don't want to pay for your illnesses. So, you know, we're hoping that these groups will get behind it. Um, as far as government funding, we don't want any. We look just for private money so that we can't be controlled one way or another. We're not looking for ex exit strategies. Um, you know, somebody asked me about if we would um, enter the stock market. And I'm not interested in doing that because I feel then we could just be manipulated. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, it would be a shareholder's um, situation at the point of investment. Great. That was so great. Thank you so much for sharing today and, and joining us. And is there anything else that you want to share with us before we go? I just want to tell you that I feel great. I'm doing really well. Um, <laughs> and, and the future looks bright so far. Great. Well, you are absolutely radiant and your energy. I love it. And I'm so excited for you. And how far off into the future should we wait until we start seeing things that might be changing? Or how can we keep up to date with your progress? Well, I'm hoping uh, that, that we will uh, have some analysis at three, five, and eight months, and then one year. Uh, we're hoping to get um, some good analysis. You know, it's, it's always possible that um, things go south, uh, that, you know, tests don't work out, that enough cells were not transduced. Gene therapy is a tricky, tricky beast. It's a slippery monster. Uh, I just, I'm just really hoping uh, for good results. And of course, we're going to keep everyone updated. So look at our website, uh, see what's happening on Facebook, on BioViva, uh, because uh, we'll be keeping it updated with, with anything we can as, as we go. We want to be very transparent about this. Perfect. Well, you have my phone number and whenever <laughs> you are ready to go, uh, I will be your second. I'll be patient one then. <laughs> it's better to be uh, patient one than zero the hero. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Liz. You are awesome. And here is to our awesome feature. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. The future is awesome.